members of this channel, you guys have seen this video that's available to members only, where I talk about how I'm, I get frustrated hearing Andre 3000, one of my top three MCs of all time, talk about or describe or make an excuse as to why he's not rapping on age. <laughs> he, the way he talks about it, sounds like he still believes that once you get older in age, there's nothing to talk about. He does this consistently. There was a GQ interview where he says, what am I going to talk about? Colonoscopies? Maybe. I don't know. Now, I understand where he's coming from. If he doesn't want to rap, he doesn't want to rap. That's fine. That's fine. If people don't want to do that, that's cool. But the way he talks about it makes it seem like he's talking more so from, he's not talking from a personal standpoint. He's talking about that's just how he views things, and he doesn't think that people should do that. Right? He doesn't think that rappers should be rapping. It sounds like that. I'm not saying that's his intentional, but that's how it comes across. You know, after he did the GQ interview, there was a couple of rappers who said some things about it, right? Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne, for example, he said, uh, I re this was on his Apple Music show, Young Money Radio. He said, I've read a depressing quote or two from someone I respect a lot in music. And they were asked, why you ain't been doing music or whatever? And they was like, man, what I'm going to talk about? I'm in my 40s. What am I supposed to talk about? I was like, wow, that was so depressing. I'm like, I have everything to talk about. I have everything to talk about. I mean, Wayne and, and Andre have collaborated. My favorite collaboration between the two is Hollywood Divorce. Incredible track. It's one of my favorite Wayne verses forever. Forever. You know what I mean? Of all time. It's one of those, I, you know, when people talk about talking about real things in their music and not everybody does it or people stay away from social issues or whatever, that's a great example of Wayne going into that box that he doesn't always go into either. Like, Wayne will give you Georgia Bush. He'll give you a Hollywood divorce. He's a rapper from the 90s. <laughs> There's a lot of consciousness in their stuff. I know what happens on Tuesday and Thursday, you know what I mean, and why. But Hollywood divorce is a a phenomenal song. And I'm not sure who had the better verse. I go back and forth between Wayne or Under 3000 on that song as to who had the better verse. But this is what Wayne said when he heard it. You know, the locks, they also had something to say about it. Sheik Luch said, nah, so much to talk about, Drake. It's a lot, man. Just how you word it and put it. Of course, we're not talking about being in the hallways and trapping and all that, but it's a lot. Let us know what you've been through. Styles P says, rap about his rap about his travels. He's one of the greatest to ever do it. He could have rapped over the flute beat straight up. I think rapping about what he is going to rap about is a good point of view. It gives different people different perspectives. I tend to agree, especially considering, you know, where how Andre is so great at common man raps, right? So Three Stacks did an interview with Crack Magazine. He's been talking a lot more ever since. Uh, New Blue Sun, his flute album dropped. He's been doing interviews. He's touring. He's probably going to win a Grammy for this project, to be honest with you. I'm not sure which category. Probably in the, you know, wherever they put flute music in the, in the Grammys, I think he's going to take it away. But he did an interview, and he responded to people who are critical of his statements about being too old to rap. I have nothing to rap about. What am I going to rap about? Colonoscopies. Right? So here's what he said in Crack. He said, I've heard some rappers reply to what I've said about age. And I have to ask, what are you rapping about? Some are the best braggadocio rappers in the world, and we love them for that. But it's so much easier to do, to do that for the rest of your life. I don't necessarily rap like that. Our formulas are different. Listen to that. Some of the best braggadocio rappers in the world, and we love them for that. But it's so much easier to do that for the rest of your life. I don't necessarily rap like that. Our formulas are different. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say that shade, but it's probably, you know, maybe, maybe it's shadow. It's shadow. Maybe it's shadow and not shade. All right. So he continues. He, Andre says, tactfully referring to his archetypical critic, critic, but mentioning no names. He doesn't know what it takes for me to do what I do. 
I don't know what it takes for him to say the same thing over and over again and still keep it creative. But I love him for doing it. <laughs> I think he's talking about Wade. I think he's talking about Wade. Now, he doesn't say who it is. But Wayne said, Wayne's in his 40s. He said, I have plenty of things to rap about. And Andre says, he doesn't know what it takes for me to do what I do. I don't know what it takes for him to say the same thing over and over again and still keep it creative. But I love him for doing it. That's <laughs> such an Andre 3000 way to say, hey, dog, you and me, <laughs> we not the same. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He even talks about Drake versus Kendrick Lamar, which is actually really funny. Uh, he says, of course, Andre drew the attention of Kendrick Lamar, who rapped hip hop's most hype flute man into a bar on like that. If he walked, if he walked around with that stick, it ain't Andre 3K, the precursor to his all out dismantling of Drake in the biggest rap beef of the Internet era. He says, as a 49 year old rapper, you're just happy to get a shout out, Andre laughs. But as a rapper, I've noticed myself walking around with this stick. So it was a line for me, too. And I was trying to find a way to use it, but Kendrick used it, so I had to say, yeah, he got that. <laughs> Kendrick did flex on that with that bar. Andre has admitted to writing more than a few diss tracks in his career, even calling it good exercise. You have feelings. If hitters say some slick shit, lines will come to your head immediately, he says. But he's resolved to never release a record talking crazy about another artist, even if someone calls him out of his name. The things that can happen once verbal disrespect has gone too far simply don't interest him. Despite initially enjoying a front row seat for Kendrick versus Drake, he's a fan of both, this realization gave him pause. Here's what he said. I got a little sad at a certain point. In early rap battles, you had kids in the park rapping, at e rapping against each other. But it's not just people rapping now. You got people with 100 employees. You have livelihoods, empires, companies, deals. All of it can be jeopardized. If you don't have anything to lose, sure, go for it. But if I already made it, I'm not sure it's even worth it's even worth it anymore. I mean, that's one of the things people say about Drake. I give Drake credit for even responding, you know, because Drake does have a lot to lose. Kendrick has a lot to lose. Cole has a lot to lose. These guys are titans of the industry. They're titans of entertainment. They're titans of music, and they're titans of the culture. Right. So I, I respect people who still engage in the sport of it all. Uh, but I also understand where Andre's coming from at this at this point in time. I don't think that Andre's ever outwardly dissed anybody. I'm not sure. And I know Andre wore a sundress, and nobody of major note dissed him for wearing a sundress. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, maybe I'm missing it. Let me know if I forgot something. But I understand where he's coming from here. Now, there's another part here I thought was really interesting because he's talking about AI. Right? He likes AI. I like AI. I know there's a lot of people that look at AI as, a, as this thing that's about to take all these jobs and all these opportunities and is going to bastardize the creative process. Uh, but I also see it as a necessity and a tool that people need to adapt to before it's too late. But here's what Andre says. He says, I, I think some of the AI art is interesting, but as humans, sometimes we just want to know what's real. We want the humanness of things. Before cameras came into play, a king would hire the best artists to paint a portrait of you and your family. The best artists were the ones who could make it look as real as possible. But then cameras came along, so you had all these artists saying, what are we going to do now? I think, I think we're at a similar place now. But what happened was Van Gogh, and we got impressionists, doing shit the cameras couldn't do. you got to find your place to be. That's the humanness. Right. AI is just another tool. It's another tool. It's, it's like what happened when Instagram came out. Photographers were pissed off. They were very upset. It's like when blogs came out. Magazines, very upset. Magazines pissed off. They couldn't keep up with the speed. So we're just in another, another point of evolution. And uh, big shout out to Andre 3000. You know, he's always going to be one of my favorite rappers of all time. I literally have him in my top three. My top three is Andre, Kendrick, and Lupe. And it shifts. I made a video on this channel, and it's Andre, Lupe, Kendrick. You know, I'm thinking about making another top five or even extending a top ten. Let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in. Because um, that's the universal hip-hop conversation, and I don't think it ever stops being fun. <laughs> I love the competitive nature and all the elements of hip-hop. Um, and that's what I really see when I see this list of stories today.
you got breaking in the Olympics, an example of competition in uh, on a global scale. We've got uh, Haley Joel Osment talking about competition between two top tier rappers, Kendrick and and Drake. And we've got Andre 3000, uh, you know, commenting on all things that are uh, commenting on why he hasn't rapped in a while. And I just think a lot of that comes down to he doesn't have that burning desire to compete in that way. Right. But Andre's on tour with his, his uh, flute, New Blue Sun. He's touring that album. He also talks about how he might want to get into sculpting next. He's just a consummate artist. But let me know what you guys think about uh, everything that Three Sacks just said in this, co- in this conversation. And let me know if I should do another top 10 list. Maybe I should do a top 10 list. Let me know if you guys want to see where I'm at these days. My name is Justin Hunt. Like, subscribe to the channel. Follow at the company man on everything. It's all happening. Justin Hunt is here, it's all happening. Justin Hunt is here, it's all happening. The mathematical breakdown of this mighty game of rap we in. It's boom bapping Systematical culture views us radical, it's all happening. Shaking hands and dapping it. Life through the lens of hip hop from trip hop to yes, yes, dog, you don't stop, you don't, you don't stop, stop. Justin Hunt is here, it's all happening. It's all happening, yes, it's all happening. Justin Hunt is here, it's all happening. It's all happening, yes, it's all happening.